Okay, so uh, this sets up the triggers, which says that if there's any um, uh, insert, update, or delete events on any table, it's going to um, generate this trigger. Notify tables change trigger, which is up here. Oh, no, sorry. It's going to broadcast the changes. So the changes come in here, and then we just create a JSON object that's got the table. What type of change was it? Was it an alter, update, insert, delete? The row ID, what the old data was, what the new data is. So if it's a delete, obviously the new data is nothing. And if it's an insert, the old data is nothing. Oh, other way around. Uh, and this is another little bit of code that's quite nice that just um, whenever we do a migration, it just sets this up again. Uh, and this is the down part of the, um, the migration. And then there's the listener itself. So this, uh, really the clever stuff here is in the Postgres notifications. You set up a, you know, you, you launch it and then you using the configuration from your repo and then you listen for any notification events. And then when we get those, they're generally in this format. This is the name of the table, uh, name of the channel that we defined up here. Uh, somewhere here. PG notify, yeah, table changes. So that's the, the channel, the notification channel from Postgres. And then over here, we receive that and then we do something with it. Now, in this instance, what I'm doing with it is I am, I've got another pub sub and I'm just saying publish the change that came through after we decode the JSON. And so the, to do that, we're publishing on the other pub sub that I've got, that's the Phoenix pub sub that was set up in the application. And you can see here that we've launched database listener, and we've also got a Phoenix pub sub, and that's what this is called. And then that takes us over to our live view. And over here, first thing we do is we subscribe to any changes that happen on here. And then um, when we get a message, uh, we assign it. Well, so I'm doing a brute force method here because this is an MVP. I'm just getting all of the new coins out and then I'm updating the prices, which is this thing here with the latest prices. Uh, the, my stretch goal for this would be to just, you know, if we, if it, we know what um, cryptocurrency was changed, we just call an update on this. So that's updating the state of the coins. And then that just gets rendered out in this really dead simple table. And it should all just magically work. And it doesn't. And for some reason, my... Hello. Reset the database. That's taking an awful long time to just compile one file. That's really very strange. Why would it take that long to? Uh, well, it is, yeah. Oh, I know why it can't do it because I've got the bloody database open. Okay. Yeah, it's a good question. Uh, Like there's anything amazing in there. 
Hold on, just. I might just do a mix clean. I know that's brutal, but. Oh, that looks slightly better. No. There's something definitely wrong with my machine. Anyway, uh, I can persevere with this. I don't know why it's, I can't even compile now. Um, but I've pushed it up as a repo. It's just called prices um, on surinyami dot, at GitHub at surinyami. And I think my, my GitHub handle is on the meetup invite. So that's that. Anyone got any questions apart from that? Why am I so useless? I'm just curious if the change the live thing like this, but it's probably not fun to make the speaker. Yeah. <laughs> while doing that. Well, I mean, uh, that's a bit, that is very strange behavior, right? It doesn't normally. It doesn't no, I had this, I had this last week and it just went away and then it came back. Um, I don't know. Maybe it's, maybe I'm cursed because I'm using ASDF. Yeah. Yeah. As some people call it, arsing or arsing significantly, afternoon significantly destroyed files. That's one of them. Uh, okay. So if you have an example of like new row data and old row data that comes in. Um, I, yes, I did before. So uh, what, actually the Postgrex notification um, documentation is quite good on that. Um, post grex dot notification so the question was what does the the update data look like coming from the pg notify and their example here is this so the sort of message you'll receive is notification the pid of the sender um i don't quite understand this listen ref but apparently you need to set up a you need to start listening as well and that returns a ref and um, which channel it's on. So in our instance, we were using the channel called table changes and then a message. And the message is whatever you define in your code. So for instance, in my migration, the message was a JSON object, which just had the table name, the type of update. So uh, as they say down here, insert update or delete and yeah, the, the table row ID, the old data and the new data. So for instance, uh, I've got a table called prices. I look at the prices. Um, la, la, la. There it is, yep. This is a very simple thing. It belongs to a coin, coin just has a code and name. And we just, uh, we're just doing inserts in this because we just want a new, a new price, a new price, a new price, a new price for that coin. And uh, we just sort them by um, inserted that. And when we, when we were displaying the table, we're just getting the most recent one. So, you know, just get the last one sorted by inserted that proofs, yeah, descending. So, yeah. Um, pretty simple, uh, a little bit like, I don't know if anyone's used, um, there's a, is auditable, was a, a Ruby um, library that just had a similar sort of thing, you know, that table, that ID, these parameters went for that parameters. So yeah, pretty, pretty understandable and not too much rocket science apart from PubSub and my broken. <laughs> it is so this is a prototype um we're thinking of 
taking the very bold step of ditching React and going for Live View. And um, I've been given I've been given some uh, tiny subsets to work with. Um, so mainly our admin control panel, but also there's a there's a live um, you know market view. And um, one thing that we haven't had for a while, and I think it's kind of crazy, is you know every crypto exchange has live market graphs. I like pretty graphs; they're great. And uh, there's a great library related to D3 JS, but it's like uh, much simpler. It's called I think it's called Observable, and it's like D3's got a learning curve like that. But uh, observable is just like, oh, well, a line chart, here's the x axis, not the y axis, and here's my data. And it's, um, it's really straightforward. So, yeah, you can find that off d3.js because they go through now. When, you, when you're looking at the, the documentation, each one's got a, uh, you might not need to know all this. Why don't you have a look here? So, uh, any questions from people online? Ominous silence. Oh, I do have a question for you, David. Um, yep. My understanding is that, at least in the past, there was a limit to how much data you can send in one of these notifications. Is that still the case? And are you hand? If so, are you handling that in any particular way? And, uh, presumably, per message you're talking about. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Well, I, if there are limits, I certainly haven't encountered them. But then again, I haven't. I've generally just been making small messages. Um, I think it's probably good practice to keep them as small as possible, uh, just because latency, memory management, et cetera, et cetera. What were you uh, What were you planning on doing pub subs with massive gigabit images? Well, I mean, yes, three. that. Yeah, no, no, that's that's definitely right. I mean, it's a, it's actually a, uh, I'm pretty sure it's eight K, is the yeah. limit. So yes, I mean, if you if this if you just turn this on for any table and that you happen to have like a JSON B column or something like that in there, um, that's you know got something massive in there, you you might be in trouble. But yes, yeah, most, I see what you're saying. Like, use cases, yeah. If you had a blob in there, yeah, yeah, it's a very good point, isn't it? Um, because it's going to transmit it anyway. Hmm. Uh, I guess what you could do is in your um, trigger definition, you could um, you could just put you could just truncate it or something like that. Uh, hmm. That's an interesting question. I have so many ideas. <laughs> the questions, but just putting the ID in there is often enough. Well, yeah, that's true too. Like, you just want to know something happened on that that row. Why don't you go and figure it out? Yeah, and yeah, and given that this is going to be passed through to something that's got full access to the database anyway, it's that's probably an even better way of dealing with it. Excellent. Yeah. Sorry, what's the What if, like, what if someone smashes a table? Feeding and notify queue. What's the behavior in terms of overload? Like where, where do things get dropped? Uh, as in, will notifications get dropped? Yeah, like does does I don't know anything about the yeah Postgres notify stuff. Well, so, so that that was a concern for me because um, obviously a crypto exchange. There's a lot of uh, there's going to be a lot of updates on prices coming through all of the time. We don't update that often we don't need like microsecond accuracy um but we are expanding the number of coins that we're looking at so uh it could end up the, like this you know um naive implementation here i was a bit concerned that it just might be generating lots of notifications and just causing problems you know memory timeouts and things like that uh so what i would do as a extra version of this is uh, rather than put this just in a migration, I'd probably have some dedicated functions to keep a list of who's wanting to know about which coins at the moment, like when they log in on the socket, store the coin ID and store the user ID 
and then create a trigger on the fly. And then when they log out or the web socket closes, destroy that trigger again. That said, every time I try to do stuff like that, I end up in tears and calling my good friend Ingrid, who knows more about Postgres than I do. Nice. So, um, but yeah, I, I, there, there, there would be a problem eventually just for bandwidth. Um, and so, yeah, we've thought about that. I'll let you know when I encounter it. That'll be fun. <laughs> cool. I had a question. Yep. Uh, how big does this table get? And do you clear it out? Or how are you planning on dealing with the time series? Um, yeah, we were just going to be like archiving it. Um, we have sort of background tasks that archive a lot of stuff. Some data we have to keep every transaction of, like any any transactions we have to keep that because Australian securities insist, insist on it. Uh, but as things things like historical price data, yeah, not really. You know, we don't really need anything more than the last week or so. And if we want to get more, we'll probably just go and query a third party API and get you know nice summary of the data on a daily basis or something are you guys an exchange yeah so do you have to keep the order book and show the order book for people who are trading absolutely yeah yeah that that's legal requirement unfortunately um yeah and we have to do kyc and um anti-money laundering and all that sort of stuff because isn't it that the order book would change more rapidly than the price Sorry, say the last bit again. Wouldn't the order book, which is actually complicated <laughs> data, change more rapidly than the price? Um, it trades less. You're than... talking about our order books or the or the, the blockchain sort of books? No, because aren't you holding everyone's like orders? Yeah, yeah, we are. So yeah, that stuff that stuff changes and it just grows. We're still fairly low traffic, so we can put off that decision for a while, but I mean, uh, given how many new users we're getting each month, we might have to deal with that sooner. Uh, but yeah, we have to keep everything. Um, and I don't think that expires either. It's not like, you know, uh, or, you know limitation of statute, statute of limitations or anything like that. The tax office, if you dodged it 30 years ago, you are going to still be chased up. And um, same with those and money laundering. Any other questions online or in the room? I've uh, put my the URL in the um, uh, in the Zoom chat. Uh, oh, cool. Uh, Robert Allen's got a link there to some info about SQL Notify. That's good. I will check that out as well. Awesome. Thanks, everyone. Thank you, Dave.